What is up guys? Today we're gonna be talking about turbos. And the reason we're gonna be talking about turbos is because mine blew up. So I'm gonna show you guys how to rebuild a turbo. And I'm also gonna go over different options when you rebuild your turbo, because if you have to tear the thing apart, you might as well make it better than it was before. But um, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so the turbo we're going to be rebuilding today is an HX40, which is very, very similar to the HX35. They basically look the same, and those came off of 99 Dodge Cummins. And the HX40s come off of, um, I think, diesel generators. I don't think they ever came on a truck, but the HX35, like I said, is the same thing. So, I'm going to show you guys how to rebuild it. So basically, all you're going to need for this is oil, um, snap ring pliers, your new turbines, a full rebuild kit. It comes with all your journal bearings, your gaskets, your snap rings, all the good stuff that you need to get back to driving back or drifting or whatever. So let's get into it. All right, so what caused this entire mess that I'm in is my journal bearings failed. They got really loose and they kind of just floated around like this like back and forth. So my turbo, both turbines were actually hitting the housing a bit and it would just basically stop and it wouldn't spin and the car would basically stall because it was trying to spin this, but this was touching the housing so it wouldn't move and it would just choke the motor. So I got a new one of these. I'm gonna put everything that I ordered in the description below and I'll do all the different wheels that you can get and I'll explain to you what different turbines do and you can pick whatever one you think is best. So the difference in the compressor wheels are the six and the seven are gonna have more lag but you'll get a lot more top end airflow and the eight is gonna spool up quicker but it's gonna have less top end airflow. And this is the new one, this is the new seven See, it's all nice and coated. And then this is the new hot side. The less blades, the lighter, and then the lighter it is, the faster it's gonna spool up. So, I mean, we'll really find out when I bring it to the dyno tune and see how much of a difference when it gets on the boost. I'm gonna link everything in the description so you can pick what blades you want, and then you can go from there. But um, yeah, I'm gonna start rebuilding this thing and show you guys how to do it. I already took everything out of it to make it easy. No one wants to see me take the thing apart then put it together because it's kind of pointless. All right, so this is just some cheap oil I found around the garage. You don't, it doesn't really matter. You're just lubing up the parts so you don't score or cause any imperfections because journal bearings, they run off nothing but oil basically. Now, I don't really know every single part's name, but I'll try to look up a lot of the ones that I don't know so that way I can look more professional than I really am. All right, first step. Inside the turbo housing, there is a snap ring that looks just like any other snap ring, but it goes all the way in the middle in here. So what that guy does is it divides your two journal bearings so they don't touch. So he sits like right here when you put the shaft through. So mine's already in there. I didn't feel like taking it out well, I couldn't fit mine in there to get it out. Not that important. So I'll do the hot side of the turbo first. You take this little dude, put some oil on him, and then you're gonna put him inside this hole. Pro tip. Nah, just kidding, I'm not a pro. You use your little pan over here so you can dip your journal bearings and parts in it just like this. That's cool. Sorry my camera's out of focus. I don't have a camera guy right now. We're cool, that was easy. We're learning, guys. All right, so now after you put him in there, you're gonna take one of your new snap rings and you're gonna lock him in place. So you take your fancy Amazon snap ring tools. Oh, these things are so cool. Okay, try not to lose it. I already lost one. Whoa, that was easy. <gasps> it's in there. It's sick. So now we're gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Oil up your journal bearing, and then drop them in there. Cool. Now you grab another snap ring. See if I can get a better angle. It's like disarming a bomb. Oh. Give it a little bit of a push. 
One, two. All right, it's in there. All right, now that we have the journal bearings in, make sure that they spin freely. You should be able to just put your finger in there and you can tell if it's spinning or not. If it doesn't spin, you do not have them in right. So now, next step we gotta do is we gotta put in our thrust collar. This is pretty straightforward. You put this in the hole. After that, you take your thrust bearing, which is this little guy. It looks kinda like a half-eaten cookie or whatever you wanna call it. But what you wanna do, line up that little pin with this hole and then this little indent right here where my finger's pointing, little indent right here is gonna go over this hole. I guess you could oil it up, right? I don't know. Do I oil, I don't know if I oil it. Sure, why not, fuck it. <laughs> All right, now the next step is we take our oil seal plate and our oil deflector, and you're gonna press this into the oil seal plate. Just like that. So now what you're gonna do is take your brand new O-ring out of your rebuild kit, and you're gonna put it right in here. Just like that. It goes in pretty lightly. Just lightly oil it up. All right, so next, you get this little snap ring, which is kind of a weird one, but it goes on this little like dowel pin that's gonna lock in your oil seal plate to your um, thrust bearing. So you just gotta press it on really like, it's kind of weird looking, but you just press it on. Just like that. So that way it will lock itself in. So now, as for the oil seal plate, um, this little guy, obviously, this part goes in the hole right there. So now all you're gonna do is press them together, just like that. So the next step is you're gonna press the oil thing, whatever we called it before, we're gonna press it right in here. Just like that. Wow, that looks really good. Now the next step is we're gonna take the big, well, not the biggest, but one of the big snap rings and we're gonna put it right here to hold that thing in place. <clears throat> Watch your fingers. Now it's in. It should look like that. All right, so we're done on the cold side of the turbo. Now I'm gonna flip over the housing like this, and I'm going to take my new heat shield, which is this guy, and you put him right there. And now, for the fun, exciting part. Now you're gonna take your brand new fancy 10 blade, or 12 blade, depending on what one you want, and you're going to put another snap ring, that groove right there. Make sure you oil it up, because you want to get oil behind this little snap ring. So the same way we did the other one, just gently press it on, you're good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put the new shaft into the hot side of the turbo, and um, I'm going to oil it up just because I don't want to score anything. This shaft basically floats in oil anyways, that's how the bearings pretty much work on a um, journal bearing turbo. Now through the bottom, get in there. You want to hear the snap ring. We want to feel the snap ring click into place. Just like that. We're getting somewhere, guys. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. Now you put your fancy new turbine on the front. Just like that. All right, so now what we're going to do is put on the reverse threaded nut with some red Loctite because you don't want your spinny thing exploding while you're on the track again, like mine did. Oh yeah, it's reverse threaded. Don't forget that. All right, so now all we got left to do, well, not only, but now what we gotta do is tighten it up. Now remember, it's reverse threaded. I keep forgetting. I'm sure there's a better way to doing this. I just, I don't know why I don't know. 
Okay, it's good and tight. Oh wow, that's way better than it was before. That's way better. All right, so the turbo is basically all rebuilt. Now all I gotta do is put the cold side right here and this little guy, the gasket, is going to go right here. Okay, now that you got your turbo all flipped, definitely remember where the housing goes because you don't want to clock it the wrong direction. It's easy to change when it's on the car, but still. Okay, so now for the sketchy part. We got to put this beefy snap ring on here without losing an eye. So I'm going to clean this up because in the kit, they don't give you a new one. I don't know why. They probably just assume that these never really go bad. So save cost, I guess. So I'm gonna clean this up with a little bit of brake clean and a rag and then we're gonna put it on. Make sure you put the snap ring opening somewhere where you can easily access it from your car so that way when you put the turbo in, you can actually change the um, cold side direction on the turbo without trying to like take off a manifold or anything. This is so sketchy. Maybe a little bit more. But then I can't close it. Like, okay. Oh, Jesus. Let's see if I can do it. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Try to use two hands. Damn it. They won't close enough. All right, so I found these. They're not the best, but... Uh, I gotta work with them, apparently. Uh, don't care. Oh, Jesus. They're not very grippy. Oh. 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 Oh my god, this is fucking... These are terrifying. Oh! Fucking vice grips. Less... Less hard. Oh! I promise this isn't really that hard. I just don't have the right tool right now. I don't know where I put it. Man, this is, this is a doozy. Now they're about to lock. Might be able to. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. under your skin. If I take a bet, you can guess who gon' win. I walk in the decks without no protection. I function in every city I'm in. I'm the great Google Pillar.